out about society is concerned. And that is that wind power is obviously an, al an alternative energy source, alternative to fossil fuels. Everybody wants that, but nobody wants the birds to be at risk uh, to wind power turbines. And this debate rages in the, in the birding community uh, everywhere, particularly in Ohio, because of the, the initiative to put wind turbines on Lake Erie. And the problem, of course, is that there is no evidence of uh, post mortality studies on the impact of the turbines on birds. Um, <clears throat> so um, the, the discussion is, well, what to do about that? Do we allow these folks to go ahead or do, do we uh, continue to press for studies of post-construction mortality on birds? What are your thoughts about that? A topic I've given a lot of thought to. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, wind energy is an essential component and part of transitioning our world to a, to a clean energy economy. And I think in exact relevance to the Audubon and to birders, I think that a lot of points need to be laid out. And, and, you know, no question that wind turbine farms should not go in the path of migratory path. So there is need for studies. Um, I'm, you know, confident that the migratory routes are fairly known. Um, and so that absolutely should go in there. And I'm familiar with a lot of wind projects, um, the wind project on the lake, on Lake Erie being one, and you, they have had to go through a lot of different um, studies with the EPA and the ODNR and the Fish and Wildlife Service to make sure that the project won't have significant impact on other species. So, you know, making sure that the, the process through NEPA or whatever type of um, environmental impact statement has to happen, you know, has to be part of the program, just as if a coal-fired power plant was going to go in, or a nuclear power plant, or some type of energy generating facility. So um, there has to be those, you know, pieces parts. But I do feel that we also have to pull into the equation the impact buildings have on birds. Um, I've read many studies where you know, the number of birds killed by tall buildings compared to wind turbines, you know, the tall buildings wins out every time on the number of birds killed. Um, you also have to take into account the impact that um, carbon dioxide and mercury from burning of coal, ha what impact that has on our water, which impacts our fish, as well as our birds, as well as human health. So this, it's not just um, you know, what impact it has on birds if a bird is hit by a blade. It's, you know, what impact, you have to look at the true impact that coal-fired power plants have on bird species as well. And if you don't bring that in, you're just not looking at a level playing field. And, you know, mercury um, pollution, which comes from the burning of coal, which several different things happen. It goes up in the air, it comes down to the water, that's one of the reasons we have high levels of mercury in fish. Um, if there's scrubbers on coal-fired power plants, then there's, you know, it, there's leftover like coal ash that ends up, you know, in these compounds and they leak and that ends up in our waterways. So you have to look at what is the true impact of coal-fired power plant, what's the true impact of wind farms, um, and take all of that into, into account when you're thinking about doing a wind project. So I think more education around the impacts of coal, which powers more than 50% of our country, um, in some states clearly more, um, we need to take all that into account. So I think further education on those issues is vital. Um, and then where the projects are cited is the biggest piece of it as far as what potential impact it can have on birds. Uh, my personal feeling 
is we have to move, move forward with significant amount of wind projects. I prefer distributed generation projects where um, a solar or wind project is built to generate power for X for this particular facility instead of just you know huge wind farms everywhere that powers a lot of different things. Um, in order for us to get to the scale that we need to get to transition from a fossil fuel based economy to a renewable energy one, we need to do these larger projects as well. So, um, but I think dialogue and debate are really great. I just think that the proper information and looking at all of the issues at hand have to be part of the conversation to really understand whether that particular project is a good one or a bad one. Under the premise, of course, that nothing is perfect. So, you know, powering energy efficiencies is ab about as perfect as we can get, where we don't use what we don't need, and therefore we didn't have to maybe put up 300 wind turbines, maybe we only had to put up 150 because we became energy efficient first. So, um, as I'm sure people know, you know, efficiency should always be number one. Prior to coming up with some type of um, generation.